Hello, all of you being gloriously wonderful people. This is the Benefactor Shafter V12 Armored. And I'm about to find out if it'll off road. This is the second most voted for vehicle this week, coming in with eight votes. You can vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured in Will It Off Road by clicking on the link in the description down below. And it doesn't take a lot right now to uh, get a vehicle pushed right to the top, as we'll see with our first place vehicle this week. Uh, I'm sure it probably only took somebody about five, maybe actually probably five minutes, probably two, three minutes to uh, get their vehicle of choice right there at the top. Anyway, Shafter V12 Armored, uh, as we saw just a few seconds ago, a uh, very, very tail-happy vehicle, uh, just like the regular Shafter V12, um, which for some reason got a much slower time going up Mount Chiliad than this car. I'm going to have to investigate that and find out what's what if I just entered something wrong or what it would be because, you know, I'm having trouble believing that uh, the... Regular V12 took nearly a minute more. Yeah, something had to have happened. I had to run into some issues. Um, I did decide, I recorded this car a couple times. I had some mistakes. Uh, two previous runs on this one. that I decided really impacted the time that were just due to me being careless. But I went ahead and left in this run, even though there are a couple places where the tail steps out, because that is what you run into with this car. It is a tail happy car and you've got to be careful, especially in the dirt, uh, because the second you get on it, if if you're in the middle of turning at all, which I mean, let's face it, you're always in a corner on this mountain. Uh, if you're in the middle of turning at all with it and you get too hard on the gas, the back end's coming around. I mean, this isn't a vehicle that you can just floor it. It's just, it just isn't. And when you do start getting too hard on the throttle, it punishes you for it. So, you know, it's something you have to deal with. But we're still going to get a really good time out of it. Um, I know cars like this, where they've got plenty of power and everything, but I was like, uh, boring. Well, I think that this could be a first place contender. I really do. We'll have to wait and see. But I mean, look at this. We're at the two minute mark and we are already on this final climb. Uh, uh, that's that's looking pretty good. A lot of our sub three minute cars are right around here at this point. So we're looking good. We we could really get a good time out of this car. Uh, and of course that won't hurt my feelings at all because I love the Shafter V12. I love the Shafters in general. They're, they're some of my more favorite cars. I always loved the Shafter. Oh, there's a jump and a half. We haven't been over here before. I don't think ever. On the little off road, that may have cost it its first place, and it might have also cost it three minutes. I don't know if it can hurry up and get up here. If it doesn't have any issue on this climb here. Oh man, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, we're still gonna get under three minutes, but I don't know. We're not gonna get that first place. But will it off road? Yes, I need to really make that edit. A lot shorter because I sit there and not talking for too long. But yes, it will definitely off road and it does come in second place. Just um, about three seconds behind the Zirconium Stratum. So, hmm, interesting. Uh, interesting enough, it does beat out the ETR R1, uh, ETR1 in overall uh, by about half a second. And that's a supercar. Um, it might have been capable of first place if we wouldn't have had those two really big mistakes. The one down on the ground, on the pavement, and then that jump there at the end. I don't know. It's stuff I decided to leave in and go with. Uh, no, not because I was tired of running it up and down the mountain. I will do it as many times as it takes to get an accurate run. But because I felt that those two things were issues that you could commonly run into easily with this car. Uh, not just careless mistakes. So... That's why they stayed in. Anyways, I was saying, I, I really love the whole Shafter lineup. The, the long wheelbase, regular wheelbase, whatever. It's just a good car. I mean, if you remember way back in the day, of course, this isn't true anymore, but way back in the day, the Shafter, well, it was the sedan to have in races. Well, there's an interesting way to get over that jump. Um, I never realized that was even a path until today and hit it by accident. But yes, yeah, in sedans, the Shafter was the car to have uh, in racing. There just wasn't much that could really touch it. Um, 
Wow, this thing is having trouble with the jumps. And it held that spot for a long, long time. And I think in sedans, is it still? Ooh, ooh, uh oh, issues, issues. Oh, a safety tree caught us. You think those trees are there just for decoration? No, they are safety trees. They have Rockstar plotted out all the angles people are likely to fall off the mountain. And they put a tree in there to catch us. And if you believe that, you'll believe that I have the most popular YouTube channel ever. Now, what happened right here? The reason this pause, I know this, this video is full of issues. Uh, my controller batteries died. I edited it out the, the time of me actually putting them back in and we'll resume the timer right about the same spot that the batteries died and I wasn't in control anymore. There we go. Yeah, my batteries died in my controller. I know, I'm part of the PC Master Race. But yes, I play with controller, especially in driving games. Um, I think it makes it a whole lot easier. I wish I had a wheel, but then I wouldn't be able to do the guns and the running and all of that. Ooh, man, this thing's having issues on its descent. Flying all over the place. But yeah, I love the shafters. Great cars. Uh, I th and plus, I think they're beautiful cars. Uh, just nice looking sedans. Oh, got a hiker. Oh, got another hiker, man. Look at that. It's two in a row. This car's already taken quite a beating, though. We haven't even done the damage to it yet. Gosh. What's it going to look like when we actually intentionally try to abuse the car? But we're down. Two minutes, 44 seconds. We're going to go back up to the top of Mount Chiliad and see what it can do. By the way, mm, beautiful view. Uh, once again, and I'm going to have to... You know, do this for a couple weeks and see what the viewership is like. But this wheel off road is also in 4K. Um, so if you're not watching in 4K currently and you're seeing all that lovely compression that YouTube does at 720p or 1080 or even worse, uh, on some mobile phones it drops it down to like 360. Yeah, terrible. Um, but you should have the option to switch it to 4K for quality. And if you do have that option, I would encourage you, if you don't watch the whole video, watch a little bit of it in 4K. Because for some reason, YouTube does not compress the hell out of 4K like it does with all the other resolutions. So you get so much more clarity and all this stuff that it makes blurry going down the mountain. And I know it makes it blurry because as I'm watching the video to record the voiceover I record I render it out in a really compressed uh just preview edit and it looks like garbage it's not until I actually render out the final with the voiceover that it looks all pretty pretty but yeah it uh it looks much better if you switch to 4k be warned though it will burn through a lot of the internets because it, it looks 4k and that 4k video takes a lot to stream anyway stuff about that this car is getting beat to hell. Now it's stuck. It has been of the issues we have ran into today in this video. I swear, this this car is seen. But look at it. It is it is taking a right proper beating. I, I'm so glad when we see a car that actually renders damage, uh, even if it's not dented panels and as realistic as like you know I don't know, BMG or Wreckfest or. Um, What's the other one? I think those are the two. Anyway, it's, it is it is still pretty beat up, but we're down two minutes, six seconds. Let's take a look at what type of damage is sustained. And all the lights and windows are gone. The front and rear bumpers, the hood and the trunk, both gone, are all gone. Doors won't close, it has bent wheels, and pretty significant body damage, but you may hear there's a sticky bomb chirping. That's because this is a vehicle that takes two explosions to destroy. After all this damage, still takes two to destroy it oh it did flip it over nicely and that's pretty awesome and that kind of added in a missing door and uh now engine damage so that brings us to our next vehicle the mtl pounder custom pounder i don't even anyways um this vehicle was not even on the list last week and this week it comes in number one with 14 votes. So that is just how easily you can change uh, World Off-Road right now. Uh, we don't have anybody doing the hundreds and hundreds of votes. Though I like it when that happens. It makes me get a little lot to somebody to take that kind of time. But, uh, so the UTL Pounder. We, we 
So, real talk time. I had to modify this vehicle to even test it. I had, um, I don't remember which armor. I think the, the second, or the third option in the list. So there's no armor, and then some armor, and then some more armor, and then some really crazy armor. Um, then I had the some more armor, that, that third option down. Um, I had that on this vehicle, and it couldn't go over some of the, like, it kept getting stuck, like, back here. This little exchange right here, it kept getting stuck on. Um, it was just all over the place and any little irregularity on the surface it couldn't handle right here at this transition it would get stuck it, it could not it never made it over this never ever made it up this because the bumper stick stuck way down it had like this lower lip that went all the way down to the ground um so i had to go take it off wait for daylight again and then re-record the thing and i'm sure that'll wind up in will it off-road uh when testing goes wrong. I need to make that video. I've got a lot. I've got like 300 gigabytes worth of footage, which that's a lot of footage. Um, there's probably 30 cars in there now, so I need, to, I need to get that one going. But anyway, so that that was the first thing we ran into at the Pounder. The second thing is it's got weird physics, um, and I thought about also removing the rockets uh, from the top of it to sort out that physics issue, um, but well, they're expensive, and I'm not going to spend that kind of money in GTA Online uh, to just remove rockets that I want on the vehicle that I'll have to put back on. Uh, but now, here's the other issue that we're running into, and we saw it all the way. Well, we can kind of see where we first saw it way back there at the starting line. Um, if you look behind us, you can actually see where we start. Um, Back when we started, even just driving from when I do that spin around shot up to that little bit of distance we had to travel or travel to get to where I actually start, uh, it wanted to start doing 11s. It wanted to do a burnout, and I wasn't even on the gas that hard. Um, this thing, I don't know why Rockstar made it the way they did. Um, it's like they kind of got lazy and just like, here, give it all the torque. Uh, but it doesn't have the grip. I mean, if you've driven this thing for deliveries, you know what I'm talking about. It's just constantly smoking in tires. Um, and it, to no effect either. It doesn't, I mean, yeah, it gets, it is faster if it can ever put the traction down. But it struggles to get traction everywhere, not just in the dirt. Um, and because of that, well, spoiler, here in about 50 seconds, we're going to get the buzzer and the DNF to pop up on the screen. Because this thing just can't do it. It, it's too heavy, and I think if it had a, a better traction loss value, or maybe a little less torque and the power reapplied somewhere else, I don't know. I think maybe it could be a contender to get to the top of Mount Chiliad. I really thought it would, because so I've driven this a lot for nightclub deliveries. Uh, I thought that it would make it. I figured it'd be a struggle, but I thought that it would make it. But then once I got it in the dirt and I realize, you know, we're, we're just can't do it. And what's really weird is the back left seems to want like, to let go way quicker than the back right. So we have uneven traction across the back end. I kept trying. I kept trying for three and a half more minutes after this, by the way. That's why the video is not just hitting me. Sadly, we cannot take it up to the top of Mount Chiliad for a damage to sit um, because well this isn't in the editor the creator yet so I can't go in and put it in the deathmatch or a race or something where I can normally plop down a vehicle as a prop and then just get into it and use it that's how I always do the the damage to sense on cars at DNF going up is they're just up there at the very top in a deathmatch, and I get one of my friends to suffer through and we'll just goof it off in a deathmatch while I go fly a jet, because I do put a jet at the bottom of the mountain, and we get to the top. So for some reason, it's really hard to get spawn locations on the top of this mountain. But anyway, this isn't in Creator yet. None of this stuff from uh, the After Hours DLC is uh, so like Terabyte, all that. It's not in there. So sadly, no damage to sense. That's why you're looking at me still struggle. Um, I may update that someday if they ever put it in Creator. Um, though I doubt we'd see any damage on it, because even though it is based on an old vehicle, it's a 
modern revisit of it. They tend to drop the damage models because of all the new stuff they have to put on it. Otherwise, that new stuff would just be hovering in midair. So, that's kind of a disappointing end to a really weird bullet off-road video. But hey, don't forget to go vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured in the next Wobbit Off-Road. It's not too late. I usually uh, record on Saturdays or Sundays, so you have almost all week to get those votes in. And until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.